think that creating a sustainable world is probably the biggest opportunity in business ever. So to make it more sustainable in both economic, environmental, but also digital ways is the number one mission. I think our world is going to change more in the next 20 years than the previous 300 years. Good morning, Gert Leonard. Uh, great pleasure to have you uh, with us as part of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development Liaison Delegate Meeting taking place here in lovely and sunny uh, Montreux in Switzerland. You are a futurist and a well-known author. In this handshake between technology and humanity, the question for me is, are we sometimes confusing the purpose, which is humanity, with the tool? You alluded to your latest uh, book uh, titled Technology versus Humanity, in which you say, and I'm quoting, just because we can, it doesn't mean we should. Could you maybe explain us the underlying thought around that and what it basically means for business, as you know, this is a business audience and the business implications of that statement? Right. I think that technology is now on the verge of becoming unlimitedly powerful. So the limits of the, that, we have, that we used to have, like battery power or you know, the mobile connectivity, all those are going away because we're going to have 5G, we're going to have uh, new kinds of batteries that last two years. And basically in 10 years, technology can do anything. And then the key question is no longer going to be how we do something or if we do it, because it will all be available. Right? And so then if we, just, if we just end up doing whatever we can be doing, like changing the human genome, uh, having intelligent machines, robots that are like machines, you know, then, uh, then we're going to live in a world that's going to be highly difficult for us to survive in or to prosper in, because everything that we do will be technology. And so what we have to do is we have to say what really matters for humans is not databases or algorithms. Those are good to have, right? It, it's about engagement relationships, you know, sustainable relationships, and about building something that, that works with us. So that is the key challenge also for companies, uh, because on one hand, it may make a lot of money turning humanity into machines, right? Uh, and on the other end, it dehumanizes us, and then, and then we don't have anything left. If we want technology to do the right thing, we have to make it do the right thing. Four points here, right? people, planet, purpose, prosperity. I think this is the new mantra of the stock market in less than 15 years. Responsibility uh, is one of the, the topics around the council, responsible supply chains, responsible behavior, uh, ethics. Uh, could you maybe elaborate on what you see as companies' uh, responsibility? Elaborate a little bit further on the, on the previous question on this dualism between technology and humans? Yeah, I think in the past, uh, being sustainable meant mostly about the environment, about energy, about the workflow, uh, supply chain, and so on. But now sustainable means how can we sustain being human? You know, if in 10 years my neighbor is going to have a virtuality environment for working, he's going to work a thousand times as fast as I do, can I sustain my own work? Eh? And can I sustain things like mistakes and mystery and discovery and human things, you know, that, that, that we want to keep when technology is running everything. So that sustainability has just enlarged to include ourselves, yeah. not just the outside. And so I was talking earlier about the, the idea that we have to bring in the external things that are happening into the business plan. So every company has to include people, planet, purpose, prosperity. Four piece, uh, yes. The four P's into that plan and, and has to create a circular economy from that. Mm. Uh, and that goes for the environment, it goes for technology, it goes for being human. And that also means sometimes, for example, that we're going to be inefficient because humans are basically inefficient, machines are not. But sometimes we have to give humans the preference and we have to protect what makes us human when everything else is becoming a large scale investment. I'm all for machines that can be clever to help us, to assist us, but I'm not for machines that can be like us. I think that sounds like a death wish to me. You know? Let me take it a step further because one of the statements that, that you have in your book is, is quite, not controversial, but quite strong in terms of uh, linking uh, your statement of saying, we have reached a point, and I'm quoting again, uh, where human-centric policies and standards, digital et ethics, social contracts, and global agreements on humanizing these technologies will be as important as nuclear non-proliferation treaties. That's quite a statement. Why is that so? Can you give us your thought? Well, I think when, when we look at the reality of technology today, it's, uh, we're at the pivot point to where we can see stuff like supercomputing, yeah. quantum computing, but, but you know, it's not really there yet. And, and we can't really speak to the computer like we speak to each other. Yeah. But very soon, uh, we can see that coming. So basically, all the limitations will be removed. And then we have three major threats to humanity. One is intelligent computing, which is a threat to work that we have to deal with. 
And then, if the computer becomes as human as I do, then it's a threat to us, right? And then we have genome editing, which means we can maybe end cancer or prevent diabetes. But we can also make super soldiers. Right? And the third one is geoengineering. We can mess with the weather and we say we want more rain. You know, here in Switzerland it would be nice to have less rain, but yeah, okay, so. I agree so, with you on you that. Know, so we have three things that are basically um, going from sort of social consequences uh, to existential threats. Mm -hmm. And that's like nuclear. So it, quite clearly, if we're not going to agree on how we can you know, reprogram humans with DNA or how a machine can think, that's not going to end well for us uh, because those things are not recoverable. Like you know, we recovered from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and then we, we said, OK, as terrible as it was, we don't want to have another thousand of those. No. Right? And so these technologies will require us to collaborate. It's great food for thought uh, for our audience and, and certainly going to feed a lot into, into some of the discussions that we have around Vision 2050, which we are refreshing, in which we see nine, nine plus billion people living well within the boundaries on the planet, but certainly some tremendous developments over the last decade uh, forcing us and motivating us to refresh that vision. And well, see you know, the, the good news is clearly that, that we're going to have technology also on the positive side to be exactly. able to deal. For example, we have nine, maybe 10 billion people, but we won't be 15 billion. Right? But then we'll have new ways to grow food in vertical farms. We have food, uh, meat from the laboratory. We have water desalination. We have all these solutions. But we have to decide on a political level to distribute the benefits, to give the benefits to people who can't afford it, um, to create a different economic system that doesn't just incentivize profit and gains yeah, and, and, and jobs. Yeah. And eventually, we have to separate uh, work from jobs. Right? That's a great point you made uh, towards money, the end. I mean. Work from money, <laughs> Work oh, from money, you. absolutely. <laughs> Automation is a huge issue, right? When we think about what's happening, that's a much bigger issue than globalization. Routine. I mean, every routine that we know will be done by machines sooner or later. I call this the end of routine. The end of routine is not the end of work. It's just the end of routine. Imagine if you can outsource your routine to a smart machine. Would you feel like you're useless? No, you would feel like you can do other things. The end of the routine is not the end of human work, because this is the truth about us as humans. There's a lot more to human intelligence than to a computer. The World Business Council, as you know, and as you have seen upstairs in the, in the plenary room, we have uh, 200 member companies from very different industries operating in different geographies. Uh, in extremely different uh, contexts, of course. But if you could give an advice around one sort of guiding principle or one uh, sort of imperative that you would see out there that all companies can and should follow and identify through which they could create a sustainable future for the workforce, for humans, uh, what would it be in your view? Well, I think there's really maybe two or three things. First, as I said in the beginning you know, in my talk, you have to think exponential, combinatorial, yeah. and cross-industry, right, converging. That's, that's what's happening everywhere. So when you understand this, then the next step is to say, how can I set myself up to, have, to be successful in the future, and what is the paradigm? Then you have to think about holistic business models, uh, models that integrate the needs of people, the needs of the planet, the needs of the capital markets, and those are the new business models that we have to create. We can't just serve one side of the pie, then we end up with social media, you know, like, like that's only one piece of the pie not considering anybody else, really. So media has become an algorithm. Right? That's pretty bad for us, not a good solution. And, so, and then the third thing is to say, well, how can I come up with a business model that works in 10 years mm. while I'm still pursuing the other business model that works now? In 10 years, we're going to have a stock market that will uh, incentivize this kind of holistic thinking because if we don't do that, we're going to see a huge rise of terrorism, a rise of climate change, we're going to see all the, the solutions fall short. In a world that's dominated by technology, we must become more human. That, to me, is the answer to the future of work. We can't beat computers at computing. We're not going to beat computers at doing all those routine works. But we can beat them at being more human. We need to invest as much in humanity as we do in technology. I liked your, your message towards the end of your speech about the idea of investing in humanity is something that is uh, coming across a lot of our working groups, especially the one looking at the future of work, creating a human-centric uh, future of work, really putting humans at the center with technology as an enabler for human ingenuity, for human creativity, for human innovation. Uh, do you think this will put us on the right path? 
Uh, would you have any additional advice that you would give to a group of companies coming together to do collaborative work around this very thorny and very complex issue that we're trying to decomplexify and turn into action, actually, collective action? Would you have any advice to us in that regard? Yeah, well, I, you know, as far as the future of work is concerned, there's sort of an interim period that we're going into now. Uh, you can see clearly in 20 years or so, we'll be in the position to work very little yeah. uh, and make the same money. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, we'll have technology be the endless helper. Uh, and then, you know, when, when, when everything is abundant, like energy, food, food water, media, travel, uh, if everything is abundant, then what sense does it make to consume? Right? So the economic system will, will change in the next 20 years. Some people call it the Star Trek society or in the, in the positive way. Um, but I think what it means for work is that clearly we're going to have to get, get used to people working outside, people working remotely, people, people working virtually. Uh, people inventing their own jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, we have 21 million people working in social media. Jobs didn't exist 10 years ago. And what we have to do is we have to reskill our kids and ourselves to have the skills to deal with that future are not the skills that we're going to learn in business school. You know, they're the skills like compassion, understanding, imagination, creativity, design, you know. And I mean, some people are saying that 50% of all jobs will be outsourced in the future. That's completely different social system and everything that we know today. In fact, uh, I think in the future, work is not the thing that will define us. Mm. It's just something that we do. We should embrace technology, but not become technology. Because when you are technology, you're a commodity. Thanks very much for listening. Gerd, I would like to thank you on behalf of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, for the stimulating thoughts you shared with our audience in the plenary for the thoughts you've shared in more depth uh, in this conversation. And we'll be looking forward to sharing those with our members and with our partners going further down the road. So thank you very much thank for you. your time, for the thoughts, and best wishes, of, of course, also to you for your own work and your own future. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.